Hey guys, welcome to episode 9 of the How to Code a Spigot plugin for 1.15 series. And you can probably guess that this episode will be going over player skulls. And the reason why I'm going to go over this is because it's not that easy if you're new to Spigot, if you're new to Java. There is a way that I'm going to show you guys how to do it where it can work in all versions of Spigot from 1.7 to 1.15.2 or if you're from the future, 1.18. It will work in any version of Minecraft. And before we get into that, I actually want to show you guys one thing, and that was from the last episode. So in the last episode, we did have this if statement right here that I uh, did have a bug. So I went ahead and changed it. So if you did watch the last episode, go ahead and change your if statement to this. Uh, the bug was that if we ha were holding less than three diamonds, uh, it would still run. So if you have this if statement in here, the bug will be removed, and it's, I can test it out real quick. Slash gamble. And you'll see that I need three diamonds to gamble. All right, now that that's over with, let's go right into the making of the skull. So the plugin that we're gonna make is the slash skull command. If you type in slash skull, uh, press space, it'll just give you the skull of the player running the command. And if you type in slash skull, uh, md underscore five, for example, you get md five skull with a founder of spigot. And uh, yeah. It's a pretty simple plugin. Uh, I know it's kind of the colors messed up. We'll fix that. But it's a pretty simple plugin. I just want to go over really the method of getting the player skull because it's really useful in all kinds of plugins from GUIs to commands to bounty, uh, multi uh, mini game plugins, whatever. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Hop into your Eclipse, go to the Pack Explorer, and we're going to create a, a new project. This project, I'm going to call it Skull. You can call it whatever you like. Go ahead and press Next. Put over to the Libraries tab, add in your Spigot download. I'm using Spigot 1.15.1 because I am too lazy to update to 1.15.2. So once you have your, have your Spigot in there, press Finish. Go ahead and open up that project. Right click on the SRC and create that first package. The package, if you don't have a website, can be me.yourname dot the name of the project once you have the package created go ahead and create the, your first main class this plugin is just going to deal with one class and that's the main class go ahead and add in that famous three things i always say the extended java plugin and the methods for the on enable and on disable so this right here when the plugin starts up that method will run and then similarly, when the plugin is shutting down, this method will run. All basic things that we went over in the past seven episodes, I'm pretty sure. But this really, this plugin is going to have a, an on command method and the get player head method. So let's create that on command and it's going to return a boolean on command. You're going to need a command sender. Let's call it sender. You're gonna need a command cmd, a string I'm gonna call label, and it's an argument of string, an array of strings called args. I'm gonna to try to go through this on command pretty fast because we've done it many times in this in the series so far. And the main focus of this plugin is just the getting the of the player heads. Let me zoom in for you guys. So whenever someone types in slash skull, first thing you want to do is check if it's a player. Actually, check if it's a console. And if it is a console, go ahead and just kick them out. Instance of player. Ooh, turn true. And we'll send the console a message. You cannot do this. Go ahead, import player, and I'm pressing Control Shift O to import it on Windows. If you have a Mac, you can press Command Shift O, and it'll automatically put these imports in for you. All right, let me go ahead and scroll down for you. Once we know that the sender is a player, you can go ahead and create the actual player, and that's player player equals the cast of a player to the sender. Next, we need some arguments. So. If the args.length equals zero, that means they're running the basic slash skull. And what we want to do is give the player give the player running 
this command their head. Their head. All right. And to do this, first things first, we're going to send a message, make it look a little nicer. We're to say send message chat color dot translate aren't color codes. And what am I going to say? I'm say you have been given the skull of player dot get name. I'm going to throw some color into here at C at six, I mean, and six, which is gold. All right. Now we can do the spawning. So um, I'm just going to add the item to the inventory. You should test to see if the inventory is full and then add it to the inventory. If it isn't, and if it is full, go ahead and just drop the item on the ground. I went over that in the past episode. And to keep this episode kind of short and simple, we're just going to add it to the inventory. So we're going to do player.getInventory.addItem. And I'm going to type in get player head player dot get name and you're gonna get a red underline there and that is because we do not have this method created yet but don't worry we'll create it in a second once that's all done go ahead and copy all this and write outside of this if statement paste it in and this is where the type in the a uh, specific player Give specific player a skull. And then instead of player.get name, we go ahead and put args of zero. So the cool thing about this plugin, about skulls, the way we're doing it, is that we really don't need to check if the player exists in Mojang at all. If they don't exist, they'll just get a player skull that is empty. So no errors in the console are going to occur, which is pretty nice. All right, now let's create this get player head right here. So what this method is going to look like, it's going to look like a public item stack. Get player head, that's the name of it. And we need a string, and we're going to call it player. Go ahead and import item stack, and that's just going to be the org.bucket.inventory.itemStack. Uh, to get rid of this red underline real quick, we're just type in return null and we can get to work. So there is, is a few ways to do this, go about this. And I'm going to show you why we're going to do it. So they are, uh, in 1.13 and above, there's a different item ID for player skulls, and that is called player head. So if you're running a server, if someone's running a server or Spigot is doing 1.13 1 1 and above, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, the item ID for it is player head. But say the server is 1.12 and below, the item ID, let's type it right here actually, the item ID is skull item. So this is where you kind of get at a problem. Uh, multiple, if you have a public plugin and someone's running a 1.8 server, you can get an error because player head does not exist in 1.8. To go about fixing this, we gotta make sure we know what server they're running. And I'm gonna show you guys real quick a way, that we're not gonna use this way, so you don't need to type this up real quick, but I'm gonna show you another way to do this, and that is this .get server .get version contains 1.15. So this if statement right here, if the server version contains 1.15 doesn't matter if it's 1.15.1 1.15.2 if it contains 1.15 that means they are in 1.15 when doing this uh the only problem is if you're going to do it this way you, ha you have to say or 1.13 1.14 you have to be a big old if statement so we're going to do it a different way we're going to say boolean is new version equals and what we're going to do is we're going to get all the values in material and then check to see if it contains player head and to do this it's going to be a little complicated but we'll get through it type in arrays dot stream 
and we're going to stream the material dot values and we'll get out of that and we're going to map it all we're going to map it we're going to map the material colon colon the name and then do dot collect and we're collecting collectors dot to list and we're checking if all that dot contains player head. So I'm going to move this down a line. All right. So we're checking to see if all that contains player head. All right. Seems a bit complicated, but it's really not that complicated. All we really did was put the material names in a lit in a array list and just check if it contains player head. We're just checking if material dot if inside here contains player head and if they're running 1.8 it won't contain it so that's why if they're running 1.8 this is new version will be false so we can do a little different stuff here and what are we going to do so material type equals material dot match material is new version question mark player or, or head colon skull underscore item. Now, if you're new to Java, uh, basically what this does right here is saying is new version. So if this is true, what's with this question mark checking? If this is true, then go ahead and make the material be player underscore head. If it's false, go ahead and make it be skull item. This is a faster way I could put an if statement in here and say if new version is false, then make this the player head, make this the type. If it's true, make it this. It's just way to get the less lines of code, I guess. Um, but yeah, so now that we know the type of material that we're going to be using, we can go ahead and create the actual item stack. And that's item stack item equals new item stack with the type. And if you wanted to, comma one, set the amount of the item stack, which is one. There is one thing we'll have to do before, uh, go ahead, actually I'll show you guys. So after this, type in skull meta, and uh, we're gonna name this meta. Skull meta to item dot get item meta. Similarly to our last, I uh, think like three episodes ago, we went over leather meta and uh, has like their own kind of meta. So we're gonna create the skull meta, set it equal to the item dot get meta, and then this is where we actually set the owner to it. Dot set owner to the uh, player. All right. We got this yellow line under here, and that's because this right here is an old way of doing it. It's uh, depreciated. Um, just go ahead and add the suppression warnings because we're also going to do something else that's depreciated. So before all that, there is one thing I left out, and I left it out because I want to show you guys it real quick. So type in if is a new version. So I'm saying if is new version is false with that exclamation point, we have to do something. And the thing that we have to do is item .set durability to three, go ahead and cast a short. All right, this is also a depreciated uh, method. And only they only have to do this if you're running 1.12 and below. So if you're in 1.12 and below to get a player's head, you will have to put this in here. And then finally, we're all done. So all we have to do is item dot set item meta meta and then instead of return null return the item all right hope that wasn't too bad for you guys all we did here i'll go back over real quick all we did was checking to see what version they're running if they're running a new version old version this is where we're setting the type because there is two different item ids for an old version and a new version we're creating the item right here if it is an old version we do need to set durability and then right here is this is where we actually set the owner 
we set the skull space c max skull space md underscore five this is where we set the actual skull skin to it and then just like that we are done yeah looks everything looks good so uh, i'm gonna save it and we're gonna hop back into our pack explorer right click on src go to new file and type in plugin.yml all lowercase and we're going to create our plugin.yml our main is going to be me.codedred.skull.main and what that is right there is just your package name dotted with your main class whatever class you have the extends java plugin in that's the class that be your main next be the name of the uh, plugin which i'm going to name it skull the version the version doesn't really matter i'm going to name it 0.1 the author will be yourself and then commands two spaces skull and just like that we are all done so let's uh let's export this to my server we'll reload my server all right and let's test it out. So if I type in skull uh, k hobbits, you've been given the skull of k hobbits. You see, I got k hobbits skull right here. And you see, uh, k hobbits has never joined my server. Actually, all four of these people right here has never joined my server. So it's getting a skull straight from the Mojang website. It's pulling that data and putting it right into your plugin here. So you can use this for anyone. Um, anyone then that has a Minecraft account, I guess. <laughs> anyone on your server, anyone that off your server doesn't really matter. You can get the skull. And if you, like I said earlier, if you type in just a bunch of random stuff, obviously it's not a player. You'll just get a player head, an empty skull. So you won't get any errors in the console, which is nice. You'll just get the empty skull. And just like that, we are done. So this method that we created will work in any type of plugin that you have if you want to create a plugin for like a gui plugin and have a player skull in there this will work in my opinion this is the best method right for till today best best method to get a skull in minecraft thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys want to see something in about the spigot api go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know what you want to see i do have a list of stuff that i'm gonna go over from my experiences in coding spigot but i will go over i will try to go over everything in the spigot api thank you guys for watching please like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in episode 10 thank you